It's already the snowiest January on record. Seven to eight inches fell last night and more is on the way. Driving is treacherous and most residents have been without power and heat. This hotel is one of several chains that are becoming more health conscious. Next month, instead of seeing this stuff, soda will be replaced by bottled water and energy drinks. What's in a name? Plenty. A new coffee shop's coming to town and some people would like to censor the name. They say it's vulgar and they don't want their kids to see it. It's a real hot issue. Hotter than the coffee that's served. It's a quiet, tranquil town that calls out American values on the flagstaffs and in the windows. It's a town that says welcome to just about everybody, except a new brand of coffee with a bad name. We don't think this is an appropriate place for a bad a coffee shop. A fast-growing nationwide chain with an in-your-face name whose owner says plainly, Have a cup of bad a coffee and enjoy. It's not like Marion and Tom Rush don't like coffee. They just don't like the name. We teach our children to speak with respect, to treat people with respect, and bad ass is not a, a, a phrase that's appropriate in our family. The owner, Tony Leota, says in Hawaii, where the coffee comes from, the name is a tribute to the donkeys that haul the coffee up and down the mountainsides. But what about the provocative name? You can't call your little sister an ass. That's bad. But a donkey is an ass. That ain't just wacky. It is wacky. And the company thrives on controversy to get its name out. Local reaction is split. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Bad ass is wrong. Bad ass is just simply wrong. The town of Antioch has already passed a resolution condemning the name. The owner says any publicity is good. As for the town of Antioch condemning the name, a spokesman says that's about all they can do. He's a former commodities trader who has a real knack for numbers. Mike Beister is taking those math skills to the classroom in hopes of spreading enthusiasm to students who often don't look fondly on the subject. His methods are unorthodox, but they really do add up. Okay, stop me when I get to the end, guys. 15.857142. Mike Beister is working up a sweat over math. That equals 6.359. An Ivy League study clocked him as the fastest mathematical mind in the world. Everything I do is a shortcut. 1,100. And 69. Not a genius. All I could do is find patterns in everything. Beister is almost as fast as a calculator. Here, Mike's multiplying 356 by increasing digits. 356, 712, He's figured sequences that identify days and dates from years past. January 7th, 1998, that was a Wednesday. I never have thought about doing math that way in my life. Neither have most people. Believe it or not, Mike got C's and D's in math from fifth grade on. Oh, he knew the answers. It just wasn't the way his teachers did it. Now we're taking a newer approach, and we're seeing that math can be a lot of different ways. Every day, Every day he pushes his brain to get faster. faster. It's not that important to multiply what 87 times 42 in your head, 3654. What is important is developing the certain skills. It was one of the deadliest attacks against the U.S. since the war began. Among the dead U.S. soldiers, U.S. and foreign contractors, and members of the Iraqi army. The troops had just sat down to lunch when a blast knocked soldiers out of their seats. Seconds later, amid the mayhem and shock, troops scrambled to help the wounded using lunch tables as stretchers. An Islamic militant group took responsibility for the assault just a month before elections in Iraq are set to take place. In all, 22 people were killed. Reacting to the attack, President Bush said the insurgents will be brought to justice and the cause for peace in Iraq will continue. Today, the smallest surviving infant and her mom met the media. Romasia was born 8.6 ounces, no more than a cell phone. Most babies that size would not have survived. Doctors say Romasia and her twin sister Heba made it because they were able to stay in the womb for as long as possible, 25 weeks. The twins are no longer in incubators, almost off extra oxygen and getting ready to go home. But doctors say the twins are not out of the woods yet. The attorney for convicted murderer Scott Peterson has issued a public plea for monetary donations. Last month, Peterson was convicted of killing his wife Lacey and their unborn baby. His lawyer Mark Garagos has set up a website seeking financial assistance for what he calls a continued search for the real killer. Garagos says that donations will only be used for investigators, not attorney's fees. And a Michigan woman accused of trying to poison her husband and 13-year-old son appeared before a judge today.
Mary Cannon is accused of giving them milkshakes with lethal doses of her prescription medication. The husband lapsed into a coma, and the son was also hospitalized. Both have since recovered. Pope John Paul II made a rare admission today that age and chronic illnesses are getting the better of him. In a Christmas message, he says he needs more help from God as he gets older. The 84-year-old pontiff has Parkinson's disease and cannot walk without help. But he still plans on celebrating Midnight Mass on Christmas. Wicked winter weather continues to wreak havoc in the Midwest. Up to two feet of snow has fallen across Indiana and Ohio. Driving is treacherous. Roads are filled with ice and snow. There have been numerous accidents and spin-outs on the interstates. And with temperatures set to dip below zero, things could really get messy. The good news? A warm-up is forecast for the next week. The company that makes Cheerios and Yoplait yogurt now wants to help make a whole new you. General Mills is launching a major campaign to help Americans lose weight. It involves all 80 General Mills brands and the plan is designed to help people lose 10 pounds in two weeks. You can register on the company's website to find weight whittling recipes and exercise regimens. It's no surprise, but Oprah Winfrey's book club is proving to be a goldmine for authors and publishers. A study by an economics professor found that a recommendation by Oprah can lift a book from nowhere to the bestsellers list. Of the first 11 books Oprah talked about, all were top bestsellers within a week. That's the news. Thanks for watching. I'm Jennifer Whalen.